If you're watching this, you've probably just watched a video of me um, giving you advice on the sorts of settings that you might use at a theatre event or a gig, a rock gig, uh, to try and take uh, the best pictures. Um, and the last few weeks I've been involved with the local theatre school um, shooting various events that they've had going on. And um, this past weekend they've just had their grad show and uh, I turned up to the studio rehearsals that they had, I went to the um, dress rehearsal and I shot the show itself. And I thought it'd be interesting in this video to run through the um, post-production editing that I use um, to try and get the best out of the pictures that I've taken. Now, <clears throat> once you've captured a, a picture, clearly how you edit it is a very much a personal choice. Um, but I know that this theatre school are uh, interested in a particular style that um, we've worked on over a, a, a few years to try and get something that really catches the eye uh, and that they can use in their promotional activity on the socials uh, and also um, uh, produce uh, prints and posters that uh, go in the school. So what I'm going to do in this video is talk you through how I am going to try and process uh, a picture. And I've picked a picture which I think the school will be particularly interested in, in using in advertising. So uh, I'm going to jump over into Lightroom and uh, talk you through right from uh, the entry of the uh, picture uh, through to the final production. For this image, I've got a very clear picture about what I want to create. I want to create a very filmic, sort of 30s glamour style out of this uh, image because that's what the mood of the image is. That's what the performance was about. It was all about that sort of glamour in the early um, films. To do that, I will be adjusting white balance, I'll be using some dodging and burning, I'll be using selective uh, editing, uh, using some radial filters to enhance the performers and some linear filters to get rid of some of the things that I don't want to see. I'm going to use some big vignetting. I'm going to intersect radial filters uh, with a colour selection to make a very selected edit on a part of the image. I'm going to use a spot removal tool and I'm going to use the dehaze and negative dehaze um, to uh, soften the picture and I'm going to set the um, clarity, sharpness and noise reduction for this particular image. This image was taken at 1 250th of a second uh, at 6400 ISO and at the widest aperture possible which I think on uh, my 18 to 55 at 36 mil was something around f4 or f4.5. So uh, I'm going to jump over into Lightroom and uh, talk you through right from uh, the entry of the uh, picture uh, through to the final production. So this is a picture that I took at the live performance. As you can see, uh, we've got immediately some challenges. We've got um, people in the picture here, um, but you've got beautiful lighting and you've got some great uh, rays coming down on the performers. You've got a nice backdrop. I love this blue uh, and I'm gonna try and bring out something that just really focuses on this backdrop here the performers and to try and um, bring out a really striking image. Now, as I say, you've got some problems here. You've got the people in the foreground, how we're going to deal with that. Um, you've got this uh, performer here is in um, much more shade, uh, hasn't caught the light quite as well as the uh, performers at the back. The, the singer here is reasonably well exposed, uh, but these two performers are um, probably a little bit overexposed, so I need to try and settle that down. And the other problem here is that the the feathers that I really want to bring out and make a feature in the um, the picture are, are pretty much the same blue as the um, uh, the backdrops here and the um, uh, the patterns across the back here. So how am I going to separate out um, two sets of blue? So um, 
I'm going to start off. This is absolutely flat in terms of white balance. Now, I always set the white balance um, before the shoot to be the same. So all of the pictures uh, in the set are at the same white balance. But I know uh, for each uh, each song, each performance, or perhaps within each performance, the um, the lighting director will change up the, the colors. So now I want to find a, a white balance that works. So here, this is quite a nice blue. If we warmed it up, we lose the uh, the blues in the background and that may actually help us in that contrast between the feathers and the, um, and the backdrop. Uh, but I, I think it loses something. If you cool it down too much, uh, you, you just get a blue wash. So that's no, no good. Um, for landscape photography, you would normally go to about 550. Um, and yeah, that's, that's okay. But again, the, uh, the backdrop is, is looking a little gray. So I'm going to cool it down to, I don't know. actually think that for this particular shot that 3800 works quite nicely if you if we scroll in you can see that there is um, a fair bit of noise but uh, we can deal with that uh, and although it's not absolutely pin sharp um, <clears throat> it's going to be sharp enough and we can um, deal with that a little bit as we go through so we have dealt with the the white balance uh, let's look at the tint. We can make it more green. Nah, that looks horrible. We can make it more purple again. Uh, then the the performers are just going to look quite odd. So uh, I'll take that back. Probably, yeah, to to where it was again. So these were the um, the settings that I used actually on the shoot, and they're going to work okay. Okay, so. Um, first things first, let's straighten up the um, the picture. So the the auto setting is uh, taking this stage. Uh, I don't want to have too much of the overhead activity, and yeah, we're going to go somewhere here. I am going to deal next, I think, with the the head of the performers uh sorry of the audience here let's get rid of this head here um and that's done a reasonable job okay and let's also try and do something with this one here now again we probably want to use this clean clean line here now not going to worry too much about the rest because I'm going to uh, bring down the the pit area here uh, so that you don't really see it so let's focus now on the um, uh, the performers themselves as I said the first thing I want to do is probably um, bring up the exposure something probably around there uh, we need a bit more contrast and then you can see here um, we're actually not blowing out the highlights too much but the these uh, performers uh, on the left and right are just too bright so I'm going to bring those down a little bit uh, probably somewhere around there okay so that's got something to work with. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up this performer in front. And to do that, I'm going to use a, a radial um, filter. And just bring up her exposure just a little bit. There you go. Nice and easy. Now, of course, in other forms of photography, sort of the, the edges of any radial filter will make a big difference but here you're trying to get the overall impact and and sort of transitions between one area and the the next aren't quite as important as perhaps uh, maybe in landscape photography something like that so here um, you can be 
reasonably blunt with your tools. And when when people think about um, theatre photography, it's more the overall story rather than the detail. So here, um, the fact that uh, her legs probably I could have brought up a little bit further. I don't think I'm going to need to do that. The, the key thing is the performer's face. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to take a brush and bring down the exposure a little bit of these performers faces a little bit now there just subtle they're catching the stage lights and that's fine just and we know it's not um we know that it's not blown out but yeah it's just enough so that we're not drawing attention away from this main singer and to do that i'm now going to do something with his which is just raise up the exposure a little bit i'm going to put a bit of a contrast in and a bit of clarity here again just enough to um, provide a little bit more definition and I'm probably just going to warm his face up a tiny bit uh, with the temperature. Okay, the next thing that I want to do is I want to look at the um, the contrast between uh, the feathers and, and the background and, and to do this the first thing I'm going to do uh, is, is actually I'm going to um, provide a little bit of negative dehaze in here on the whole of the picture, it just gives it a slightly softer feel, um, a little bit more filmic, I, I think. And probably the feathers, of course, feathers are meant to be soft. And probably if we, we look at them, uh, yeah, they're, they're really quite sharp. Um, so I want to probably take out a little bit of clarity out of the, um, or texture out of the feathers. And I can do this. Um, with a, a radial filter and, and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put it right across here and what I'm going to do oops, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the blue of the feathers uh, as, as a mask so here uh, you hold control and intersect mask with a color range and now I'll have a dropper and if I pick the right blue you can see here well, let's just take down the exposure you can see that the feathers are affected by the um, the mask but not the face of the uh, performers so so we know we've caught the the feathers and now what I'm going to do if we we add clarity um, yes you you increase that contrast between the background and the feathers but actually I'm not sure that that's what I, I really want I want to make that part of the picture quite soft so adding a bit of negative dehaze just just a tiny bit uh, add, a, add a tiny bit of contrast back in. Just really makes those uh, the feathers uh, become a little bit more alive, and the um, uh, the <laughs> the uh, the performers stand out. So right, that's I think going to be all I want to do here. So um, now. What I can do is I want to fade everything for, um, other than the performers out of the picture. And so uh, what I'm going to do here is uh, basically provide a vignette, um, a pretty heavy vignette. Uh, actually, if I... And what I'm going to do is invert the mask and bring down the exposure outside. 
Okay. Uh, and increasing the feather just makes that fade a little bit more natural. And now, you can see that the audience now has largely disappeared. And the final little touch that I can use is just using a, a linear uh, gradient just drop the audience out of the picture. Okay. We've still got this, this person over here and I can just crop a little bit. The last thing that um, I'm going to do is I'm going to have a look at the um, the sharpening and the noise reduction. So quite a noisy um, picture. In terms of sharpening, I tend to find uh, a I'd want a little bit of an overall clarity, not too much, and then in the details here. just a sort of about 15 probably not more than 20 but I can be quite bold with the, the luminance noise reduction and so in overall noise reduction 40 begins to wash <laughs> to smooth everything out and for for lots of photography that's not great but in theatre photography it can work quite nice and you you get this sort of filmic type look now this is this picture has a bit of a, a feel like the the um kenneth branner death on the nile type uh very sort of um 50s um cinema goddess type feel and that totally works with this particular image which is all about uh sort of that sort of 30s type glamour So, I hope you found this useful. Um, I hope you've picked up the idea of being able to do some dodging and burning and some using uh, the haze and dehaze a little bit uh, to try and affect the uh, textures in your picture um, and to really try and bring out the principal performers. As I said, in theatre um, photographs, you're really trying to tell the story and the story here is the glamour of those four performers uh, together. Everything else is not important, so let that fade into the background. And then really try and uh, analyse parts of your principal uh, subjects to really try and bring out what tells the story. So here, it's the face of the performers, it's the feathers, everything else can fade away to the background. Okay, I hope you found this useful, and if you have, please give it a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing. Uh, it really makes a big difference. Uh, perhaps leave a comment, maybe make some suggestions uh, below. Uh, I do always get back to anybody who makes a comment. Thanks very much for watching. See you on the next one. Bye for now.